you'll notice that we've started to use the Alive flag to monitor and change the behavior of our cannonballs. Since all of the cannonballs start out as dead, the player can shoot the three cannonballs. But once they're in the air, what happens? Nothing currently can kill the cannonballs, so the first three cannonballs the player shoots will be their last. Let's add a condition that will kill the cannonballs. We have a few options. We can use time so that the cannonballs that are alive in the world a certain length of time will die. But that would require adding another variable to the game object class. We have an easier way that only needs the information that we already have. Find the update cannonballs method. You can use the method selector. Find the line where we add ball.velocity to ball.position. Below it, add a new line and then add the following. If open parenthesis exclamation point viewport rect dot contains open parenthesis new point open parenthesis open parenthesis int close parenthesis ball dot position dot x comma open parenthesis int close parenthesis ball dot position dot y close parenthesis close parenthesis close parenthesis open curly brace ball dot alive equals false continue close curly brace the conditional is using the viewport rect we created a while back it is a rectangle that is the size of the game screen so we can reuse it for a good check on our cannonballs. The contains function checks whether or not a point in x and y position is inside the rectangle. We need to use the int commands to change the x and y from position, which are floating point numbers, into integers, which is what the arguments of contains needs to be. In this case then, Contains is checking whether or not the cannonball is within the screen. If it is not, then the cannonball is killed. The continue statement at the end returns to the top of the for each loop without executing any further code on the cannonball. This will come in handy later. Time to draw the cannonballs on the screen.